Hey guys, we're here today talking about the BYD and to give you a bit of insight into charging, what the charging costs, what the charging times are, the different options, and whether it works from a public charging perspective. So, one of the great things with this particular car is this one is the BYD Seal. It's the premium uh, version, which is the mid-spec. So with the premium mid-spec, you get a range of about 630 kilometers on average, I've been averaging 550 to 600 kilometers from this particular car. The battery pack size is 82 kilowatts, which is a very large battery pack for this car. The advantage on the SEAL versus say the Tesla Model 3 or Model Y long range is that this car can be charged frequently to 100% because it is the LFP battery system uh, rather than the CAT-L system, which, you know, out of uh, precaution, you have a recommended 80% max charge rate on a frequent basis. So what that means is with this car, if you're planning those longer road trips, um, you definitely can take this car 100%. But the one thing that I have experienced so far is sometimes it's better to charge to a lot less than 100% depending on what your needs are and what charges are, you've got in between and what stops you're planning to make. So to give you an idea, at 50%, this car will give you approximately 315 to 320 kilometers of range. And if you go to 35 odd percent, you're gonna have about 300 to 350 Ks, give or take. Now, what that means is you can charge for a lot shorter periods of time to get to 35% or just to top up 10, 15, 20% of your battery. To give you the equivalent distance in between charges that will get you about three hours on a road trip then a quick top up versus if you have this plugged in for the full charge time uh, we've done tests from five percent to hundred percent five percent to eighty percent and you're looking at anywhere from an hour and ten minutes to two hours depending on how much you want to charge which is a very long time to be parked up waiting to charge a car but also to have other people not being able to charge at a charging station so with that being said, tell us in the comments what you prefer to charge your electric car if you already have one, what percentage you charge it to frequently when you're publicly charging. Now, if you're charging at home, it's a little bit different. So when I go home, I pull up in the garage and I just plug it in and it's charged overnight. So while it's parked in at home, I'll be back to 100% by the time it gets to morning. The difference is when you're at one of these public charges here, like the one we are at in Hamilton in Brisbane, they can take a little bit of time. So let's have a look at these chargers. Now, the charger that we're at here in Hamilton is a 50 kilowatt hour charger. It's actually one of the earlier chargers that was installed back in 2020 as part of the Queensland Electric Super Highway project. Now, that was co-done with Eureka and a couple of other partners. And they're getting a little bit long in the tooth. They are a little bit slow. This particular charging station here sometimes is working for both, sometimes can only be working for one. So what that means is it's a little bit hit and miss uh, and that's why you don't wanna be holding up the only charger if you are in that situation where one charger is only working uh, by trying to charge to 100% and doubling your charging time or even charging to 80% if it's not 100% necessary. Around here in Brisbane, I see people park up all the time and they're only doing metro drives but they're trying to get to 80%, all right, or even 100%. It's a lot of time to waste just parked up Whereas most people won't do 200 Ks in a single day and you could probably get away with charging to 200 to 300 Ks of range in a very short period of time and then continue your journey. We're charging with a DC fast charger at the moment. This charger is capable of 50 kilowatt hour speeds. I wanna quickly check how fast we're going. So we are currently charging at 46.3. So it, with that 46.3 from the current charge status, we have 58 minutes until we get to 100% and we're currently sitting at 49% battery charge level. Now, if we stop at 80%, that time is gonna be roughly halved in terms of duration, which saves a lot of pain and frustration for everyone else that's trying to charge at the same time. With these chargers here as well, there are another option that you can charge with, with public infrastructure and that would be by using your own type two to type two cable. These type two to type two cables basically go into here, but they actually go into a charger similar to one of these here. 
So these here are a 22 kilowatt hour charger. They're a great alternative if you're waiting for a busy charging station or if you're parking here for a bit longer. At this speed, it will take approximately four hours for the battery to be completely full for this particular car. Uh, so if you're coming out here going to Eat Street for example or you're going for a nice picnic with the family and you need a, a bit of charging time, these cables can be really good. The cable that I use is a MIDA cable, M-I-D-A. It's available at EV Market. Uh, I, I'll put the website in, in the description, I can't remember what it is. Um, and I'll put the price in because I can't remember what I paid for it. But it's a pretty easy uh, cable to use. It's thick enough so that it doesn't overheat and wear out too quickly. Um, and so that it gives you the full power delivery that you need when you're wanting to charge as much as you can from one of these types of chargers. So that's the option there. Coming back to the car, you then have one other type of charging infrastructure. And this is the charger that you would use at home. Now, because I have a slightly different setup at home, I haven't actually opened this charger up. So this charger unit here comes with a car. It's traditionally referred to as a granny charger by a lot of the people in the EV community. And what this will do is it will give you sufficient battery charge, you know, in small periods when you, you, you've got plenty of time to burn at home, or if you're in a location where all you have access to is a standard PowerPoint. Um, however, because you are limited to your house PowerPoint, it will be a very slow journey to charging this battery. This particular car could take in excess of 40 hours to completely charge if you are at 5% to 100% using a standard PowerPoint at home. So not the ideal and preferred way to do it. The alternative is to have a home charging installation. Uh, BYD provides very affordable uh, home chargers or I also have a 32 amp um, three pin single phase installation at home, which will give me about 55 kilometers of range for every hour that it's plugged in charging. Now, at, and that's at 32, at 32 amp. So what that will give me over an overnight period is basically going from about 10% to 100% by the time I wake up, which is all you need. So there you have it guys. Those are the different charging options available for a BYD seal, uh, regardless of whether you go in the dynamic, the premium or the performance model. And those generally are the charging options available for most other EVs. Leave us a note in the comment section if you have any questions or if you have any other uh, advice that you need for, B for uh, EVs and if there's anything else that you want to see.